Okay, continuing with the uh, fan commentary of Worst Heroes and Villains Were Ever, starting at round six, The Great Escape, part one. Let's get this going. Also, I got the subtitles on, so uh, we see that Krusha is having a, a phone call with the secret boss, uh, K Cass. Yeah, that weird turkey or chicken-like villain. So, so, yeah, I had to put it on CC. It actually, when you click on it, that's when the subtitles are on. So, uh, Mirror Floor 10, I think you did a really good job putting the subtitles in there, so I applaud you for that. So, yeah, Krusha is telling Cass everything that he, what he learned so far. And, you know, just being a double agent and all. Although it's been a long time since I've seen Saber Sparks review on uh, the Donkey Kong cartoon. So was Krusha kind of a backstabber to King K. Rule, or was that also in the video game? I never played any of the Donkey Kong games. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, now he tells him about this Cyber Skull virus. So, um, Mirror Florence, if you're still looking for, you know, doing voice auditions, I'm not sure if you want to do, like, Whisper, if you have anyone to do Whisper, just in case, you know, that ghost yokai, even though you said it, my impersonation of him was really well good, hey, I'd be honored for that, but the other char other ones, I just don't know what uh, some characters sound like. Uh, the, is that the equivalent of, like, Henry? Coming, mother! I'm just asking, because actually it'd be funny if it was, like, if you guys don't get it, it's a reference to the Looney Tunes, which is also a reference to, um, some live radio show sitcom, which is on the radio, and the joke was one is that the mother is looking for Henry, who's been very late or something, that's gone missing, and she tells out, like, Henry! And then the boy who was called Henry, he would just respond by coming back to his mom and be like, Come in, mother! Like that. It's just kind of hilarious. I'll leave the link down below to, uh, to the Looney Tunes. Henry! Like that. Hold on. My third feeling all dried up. So we see the... This character, I don't know what cartoon he's from. I never heard of this guy before, but, uh... What I know is that that's Catechus P. Doom. I don't know anything about this guy. I've never seen this cartoon before. So, I know in the blog that Miro said he's, like, the equivalent of Professor Radican, which I, get. I think I can probably go for that, if that's what he thinks. I mean, if he's seen that show, I guess he has a similar personality to Radigan, or is he just also, like, the world's greatest criminal mind, or something like that? Uh, what's it saying in the description? Oh, yeah, he unveils this recent happening, the, the Unicree Inc. as an opponent to Geeson. So, he's like a rival against Geeson, or something like that. So there's his alliance, the Horde, I guess that's the Horde, that dude in the hood. That... Ah, uh, what the heck happened to your face, dude? I don't know who you are, but what happened? That's kind of creepy, I guess his name is... D. Facely, Marmister... I have no idea who you are, dude, but you're kind of creepy. And this character, I don't know where he's from. Uh, I think that's Al Copone. Don't know anything about this guy. I have no idea. But the animation, it looks nice, but meh. And that's the penguin from Wallace and Gromit. Yeah, I did never expected Wallace and Gromit to be in there. I thought this war was supposed to be about, you know, up your characters that no one seems to use in the war. Well, there was... It, one of them Grommet did get to appear in the war. It was in... Pokemon! 
heroes versus villains, and it has Victor Quartermine in it. So, it's interesting seeing Wallace and Grumman in there. Like, okay, the Penguin, he's from this short cartoon where Wallace makes, like, these mechanical pants called trousers that he can control them. Or, he has to use a controller to move the person who's wearing them. So, this Penguin that just moved in, he's actually a criminal that escaped, like, I think it's a prison for animals, or is it just a, a zoo being parodied as a prison? The one thing that confused me is how the heck do people mistook the penguin for a chicken? It's a penguin wearing a rubber red glove on its head. How do you mistake it for a chicken? It's silly, but it's still kind of like, what the heck? What is wrong with you people? Are you that stupid? But it's cool to see the penguin in there. Yeah, so me and Fattis kind of had an idea for him. Along with the Wallace and Gromit characters for non Disney Heroes vs. Villains Part 2 for the CGI realm. That dude, I have no idea who that is, but what the heck happened to your head, dude? Who are you and what happened to your head? Binky the Clown, I've never seen this cartoon before. I've only known of him from the Villains with it, Tournament Wiki. And I only know that one bit is that he's from Garfield. So, just like with Omega Red, I know who he is, but I don't know who he is. I don't know what his plot is, I don't know his backstory, I don't know what his relationship with Garfield is. I just don't know anything about this guy. That dude I also do know, like the Penguin. He's... That's the villain from Sly Cooper 3. He tried to break into his, his ancestors' uh, vault, which has all the treasures that Sly Cooper's ancestors have stolen throughout, uh, throughout history. Kind of cool to see him here. Who is that cloud-headed dude, Keen? Looks well, kind of weird. What's with that? If you guys saw it, looks like a bug wearing a gas mask. When I assume it's Dr. Loeb, I don't know what cartoon he's from. What happened to your head, dude? I think you need a doctor for that. And this character with a name, I'm kind of surprised that it sounds similar to a certain movie. His name is Clockwork de Lorange. Let me rephrase that. Clockwork de Lorange. Is that name a reference to a Clockwork Orange? You know that, that controversial movie which is made by Warner Brothers, who was produced by Stanley Kubrick, which is actually based on a book? If you guys don't know anything about that, I'll leave the link down below from, uh, uh Thug Notes, um, A Clockwork Orange, so you guys see how shocking that book is. Or, or the story in general. So, Catechus P. Doom sends both Dr. Lope and Clockwork to go cause some... cause some chaos, cause havoc. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know what cartoon he's from. I only know him from this war. I don't know anything about him. So, again, if some of you guys don't know or some of you do know, I'm not a cartoon fanatic. I don't watch cartoons. I don't watch any random, 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 random cartoons. I don't watch many cartoons. I don't just watch cartoons. I just watch what is more iconic or something that's been used in the wars. So, I don't know anything about this guy. So, uh, I guess he's like this universe's equivalent of Professor Vatican that Mira Florton thought of, so I guess I can go for that. So, uh, then we see, at the church we see Melvin, or what the heck is that? Melpha is praying to the heavens until she meets this boy whose grandfather was turned to stone. 
Okay, that looks interesting. That no one has ever used before a handheld console game. Like a very old school video game kind of thing. No one's never done that before. You know, that's all that's all full of pixels and stuff. And then we see uh, Meliodas, Deanne, and Hawk just strolling through the t town along with Arkansas and his men. Then we see Lance, or is it uh, Lena? Hold on. Lena Vane meets up with these guys, and she's surprised to meet up with Meliodas, one of those famous seven deadly sins. But I know it's weird that the characters who are the heroes of the anime are named after the literal seven deadly sins. Which, again, they were named that because they did something really bad or they were framed for something. So, it's not that they're bad guys. They are good guys, though. But it's just, it is weird that they're named after the literal deadly sins that are the sins of mankind. But it is a good anime, though. Trust me. Then we see the street sharks are being led by Bend and... That girl's name again? Ben and Lena Mack. Into a secret headquarters. It's been a long time since I've seen Street Sharks, so actually, I think I'm gonna skip this part, because that's where I tried the first time. It got a copyright claim for no reason. So, yeah, they also ride motorcycles. That's what the Street Sharks, I guess, they ride. Then they turn on the news, they see that this guy from Sonic X, again, I. Speed something? Sam Speed threatens to form his own police force to take down all the freaks. Ah, very prejudiced, ain't ya? Which kind of threatens and offends the street sharks. Then at the shop, uh, we see this kid is still, uh, yeah, at, in the uh, Kaijudo card shop, Shobu. It stops where he's still gribbling with the laws to Skullmaster. And then he meets that character, the young boy, Chris Thorndike. Ah, uh, one of the most hated Sonic characters of all time. Everybody hates Chris. If you guys don't get it, it's a reference to a certain sitcom show that might either be true or not, but it's supposed to be, tells the story of Chris Rock as a kid who has been dealing with life and he always gets into trouble. It's really hilarious. And whenever it's like on Nick at Night, I only watch Nick at Night because I don't watch a lot of random Nickelodeon cartoons. Only at Nick at Night, there's Family Matters. I've seen bits of it at Full House. And I watch Everybody Hates Chris. So, uh, it's a good show. I'll leave the link down below so you guys might know about that. Uh,. I don't hate Chris Thorndike as much as anyone does. I think it's okay. I mean, he is a kid, and kids do stupid things. I mean, he's still a kid. Sometimes kids have common sense, and some other times they don't. So he tells us there's nothing wrong, and he's trying to shrug it off. And then his friends uh, showed up and yeah, he tells him hard to say. But then Shobu's friends come to find Shobu and ask him to come back. Yeah, Chris decides to join them. Hmm. Then at the space, uh, what was it? A space council. In the head of Space Council, okay. Twinston was looking. For, what was he looking for again? Still looking around when he stumbled upon Jack and Daxter. It's been a long time since I played these games. I do like the game though, but I'm just not big on the animation style. So he meets up with them. They're not sure if they can be he can be trusted or not. But I guess he just gets them to come along with them. You know, come along then. Uh, 
Actually, I think I'm going to stop right here. If I got it mixed up, I'll fix it right here. So see you guys in the next part of the comment.